And Joel Chaseman, who was the, pro, who was the general manager, called, he said, called me on the phone. He said, come on down to my office if you got a second. So I went down there, and he said, have a seat, sit down. And he said, Stan, if, if you had your druthers, uh, what would you do with this station? And I, I had no idea. I just said, oh, we'll probably bring it up in the ratings if we could and you know, do better than we're doing. He said, what about an all-news radio station? And I think I probably said, what's that? And he then explained that there were two guys named Ken Reed and Jim Lightfoot, who I was going to meet in probably a half hour or so, who'd come up with this idea of nothing but news on a radio station. And uh, we were going to go there. And he said, call your wife, call Lynn, tell her you're not coming home for dinner, and you're going to go out to dinner with these guys, and they're going to brief you on this. And then you're going to get involved in changing the station. And he said, nobody else can know. You can't tell Al Heacock, the program director, and you can't mention it to anybody else. It's got to be a secret. Otherwise, CBS or NBC could jump in ahead of us because they've got the network and they could bring in a bunch of guys and go all news before we did. And so I met with Ken Reed and Jim Lightfoot and spent three, four, five hours with them that night. They told me what they were going to do. They showed me the wheel, uh, the clock, and uh, I went home and told my wife we were on a new adventure. And a couple of days later, we were going out of town, and somebody at headquarters was going to give me a story because I reported to the program director. He didn't supervise what I did, but he knew where I was and wanted to know where I was going. And I met him in the hall one day, like the day I was going to leave. And he said, they tell me you're going out of town. What's that all about? Where are you going? And I said, Al, I just left the phone off the hook in my office. I got to go back and answer it, but I'll get back to you. I ran into my office, called downstairs, and I said, hey, he wants to know where I'm going. What do I already tell him? They said, just get out of the building, and we'll take care of it. So I ran out, went home told my wife if Al Heacock calls or anybody calls and wants to know where I am, you don't know. You took off. I took off and uh, said, you know, I'll be in touch. And the next day, the next morning, uh, Ken Reed and Jim Lightfoot and I took a train to Philadelphia, and we started listening to stations. Uh, all of, we went to Philadelphia, Chicago, Detroit, uh, Minneapolis, St. Louis. Got into a hotel, listened to the morning drive. If we heard somebody we liked, we'd call them up and say, hey, we're from New York. We heard you. You sound real good, and we're looking for somebody to be a morning guy. If you're interested, uh, we're up at the such and such hotel. Uh, come on up and talk to us. And that's how we recruited people. We got Henry Marcotte and Alan Sh uh, Henry Marcotte from Minneapolis and uh, Alan Shaw from St. Louis, uh, somebody from Chicago, a uh, bunch of people. And then we, then we came back, and then we were working on putting the idea of the show together. We had a, a joke, a standing gag, that we told everybody we were just hiring one person for the morning news, and we had a vision of them all coming in on the same plane, since we wanted them there about the same time, and each telling each other, oh, I'm going to New York to work for WINS, so I'm going to be their morning guy, and 19 other guys saying, me too. We did dry runs at, at the old place and started there on April 19, 1965.